in your bits. Good morning, this is Sally Morgan, physical therapist, craniosacral therapist, and Tellington T-Touch practitioner for animals and people. And today we are having our inaugural episode of yoga with your dog. <laughs> and we're gonna do some pretty easy things today. Let's see how this goes. Stay here, Corgi. So <clears throat> if you're unambitious, you can start this sitting in a chair or on your sofa, but we're gonna sit on the floor. I have a cushion under me. And if you wanna sit on the floor, you can put your legs in front of you like this if your knees aren't fabulous or feeling fabulous today. You can also sit like this, but I'm going to sit in the traditional yoga position, the lotus with my legs crossed in front of me. My dog is very eager to do yoga. So if you have a small dog like mine, he's gonna end up right here. But if you have a big dog, you might put their head there or just have them next to you like he is now to start this. And if you are sitting on the floor like I am, try using a variety of pillows and cushions under you so that you're at a position where, good boy, it's not hurting uh, your knees or your ankles or your back to be sitting like this. Um, and putting something under your bottom when you're sitting like this is not like a cop out or cheating. It really is just a way to align your spine properly. So it depends on how much curve you have in your spine, um, how much support you're gonna need to be able to sit comfortably in this lotus position. Tristan really likes to do yoga with me. And I have to tell you, I've done yoga with many animals, horses, dogs, cats, bunnies, but I have not done goat yoga. And this is why. Goats have this weird, like extreme like for me <laughs> to the point where they wanna play with me like I'm a goat and I'm not. <laughs> I'm an older lady. And so getting butted and being kicked and scampered up is not really good for me, but that's what the goats wanna do. So I don't do yoga with goats because when you're doing yoga, you're in a very vulnerable position with your body especially with the kind of yoga I teach, which is yin yoga, where you hold a pose for a very long time, and even a simple pose can feel very different in two minutes than it felt when you first started. So I'm gonna help my corgi onto my lap. And again, you may have to adjust your pillow because this little fellow weighs 20 pounds-ish, 19 on a lucky day, and he's heavily seated right now. Um, and that's gonna put extra pressure on the joints in my legs to have him on my lap right now. Right, Bissy? So we're gonna start, you can hold your dog if you want to. I mean, they feel more secure because they, let's face it, no dog sits like this on a human on a daily basis. <laughs> and we're gonna start, I'm gonna try to hold him with one hand with your hands on your lap, palm facing up, join your thumb and your index finger. This helps keep your energy and your focus inward. And we're just gonna do really basic things today. So once you're in this position, start by breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth. And it helps to close your eyes if you can while you're doing this. And I'm sorry, I can't read anything you're writing because you're eight feet away from me. And if your dog has um, you know, a pointy butt or your body can't take it, you can put a pillow or something, a blanket on your lap to help support the dog while he's on top of you. But again, like my niece's dog, Mila, she's huge. She can just put her head on my leg and she's perfectly happy to lay there for the whole time we're doing this. Tristan's got a bony butt and I have to have him so that he's not um, positioned over any bones on my legs so that it's comfortable for him because this is about yoga with your dog. <laughs> so deep breaths in through the nose and out through the mouth. And then you're gonna bring your hands together. Inhale, bringing them out in front of you. Stay here, Corky. And inhale, bringing them up. And exhale, bringing them down. He wants to sit on my ankle. Inhale, inhale, exhale. And you can do this with one hand if you need to. Yes, you're not reading yet. Inhale, inhale, exhale. 
inhale, inhale, and exhale. And when you do this in a class with a lot of other dogs, they either want to visit all the other dogs or they want to stay with their person. So um, when I teach this class, there's usually no problem having your dog stay with you. And inhale, and inhale, and exhale down. And then with your hand on your dog somewhere, I like to use the chest or the shoulder because that's their heart. We're gonna do some heart opening. So reach up to one side. And if you can reach up and <coughs> over a little bit, <coughs> add that. <coughs> UPS. <laughs> through your spine and reach up and across deep breaths this get those deep breaths are very good <laughs> out with one hand, palm sort of extended toward the sky because we're connecting with spirit when we do this. Watch your hand, follow it around, bring it to the side and put it on your leg and look over your shoulder. <coughs> Biscuit, the UPS guy is already gone. back to center, reach out your other hand, watch your hand, follow it around, and look over your other shoulder, bringing your knee to your lap. Bisky, there's nothing there. to center while the neighbors are having an oil delivery. And if you've been sitting for a while and you want to stretch your legs, this is a good transition point to do that. So you can bend your legs in front of you. And now I can reposition the corgi a little differently. It's great to do this with small dogs because you really can just get them comfortable in a spot. Don't look at the truck out there. <laughs> and now we're going to work with our heads a little bit. So first, looking straight ahead, you're gonna nod yes and no with your head. This really frees up your neck. This is actually derived from a Feldenkrais exercise. And then nod no. And alternate between yes and no a few times. And then come back, Corgi. <laughs> and then we're gonna <clears throat> tilt our head to one side and nod yes and no while you're tilting your head. <coughs> Just the oil truck is key. <coughs> Tilt your head to the other side, nodding yes and no. And this is an exercise that can help your shoulders as well as your neck. It's really good to relieve tension. And Many of us might be familiar with the exercise where you put your hand on your head and just let it sit there. That can really damage your neck muscles. But this one with this movement, and ultimately you should do the movement so small, somebody watching you wouldn't see you doing it. Um, the movement at the, your end range of motion actually gains you several degrees of motion on a daily basis. So now we're gonna turn to the side and add that small nodding yes and no, alternating between the two. Nodding 
back to center, and now you're going to circle your head and neck. And don't bring your head behind the line of your spine as you do this. So you're looking up, but not back. And go as slow or as quickly as you would like. You know, if some spot feels particularly delicious, feel free to do that spot a couple of times. And come back to center and go the other direction. And you may notice some differences when you're going the other way. Something may feel easier, more comfortable more interesting. No, no. I know, he's moving his truck. And then bring your head back to center. And this one is also good to relieve tension in your neck and shoulders, which a lot of us have just from watching the news these days. You're gonna inhale and bring your ears, your shoulders up to your ears as high as you can and hold it there. And then bring them back as you're still inhale and then let them fall as you exhale. You're gonna repeat that a few times. Inhale, bring your shoulders up. Exhale, bringing them back, and just let them sink. A lot of us might know the shoulder roll exercise, but that's too effortful. We wanna just let our shoulders float towards the earth. Up, back, and let them relax. Just get From this position, oh good, the oil truck's gone. You're gonna inhale both arms and reach for the ceiling. And bring them together and return to your heart. up once more and this time tip to one side. Now I can really feel my corgi actually balancing on my legs as my weight shifts to support myself. Hands together back to center and down. Inhale, bringing your arms up again. Go to the other side. center and bring your hands to your heart. Biscuit, should we do anything else today? I think that's a good uh, start for people. You can try this. So we've got one arm up, reach to the side, turn to each side, the head rolls, and then this is the warrior arm position and tilt to each side and down. And we had our first breaths going like this. And I think we'll end with what we call sun breath. So you bring your hands out to the side, palms up, and you inhale up and exhale down. And inhale up and exhale down. And you can do this in standing or sitting. And sun breaths are really interesting. They did a study of elderly women in a nursing home. And some of them were given this exercise to go to the window every morning, standing, and just inhale and exhale. And I think they did it 10 times. Other women were put in a group exercise group, seated exercise. One would think it was social and fun and they liked the seated exercise. In fact, the women that went to the window and did this sun breath in the morning, more optimistic, more healthy, longer lived, less disease. And this was a pretty small study. I think they had 40 or so patients that they studied in this, but really interesting that going to the light, opening your heart, deep breaths, way good for your body, uh, more so than seated exercise classes. You know, there's something gentle that comes into you when you go to a lighted area and do this that you don't get when you're counting to 10 and marching in place. So namaste, thank you for joining me for this first installment of Yoga With Your Dog.
Tristan, tomorrow you're going to have to do a little more. <laughs> and uh, we will be doing quite a few of these episodes now that I've figured out how to make it work. <laughs> and if you have any questions, write them here and I will answer you. And please share this with other people you know, especially people with smaller dogs. I'm sorry I don't have a big dog to even rent. Um, the golden doodle up the road um, is living with somebody who is COVID positive, so I'm not borrowing that golden doodle right now. Plus, I don't know him at all, but I have a corgi. <laughs> so we will see you guys again tomorrow for another episode of Conversations with a Corgi. Thanks for joining us today, and we'll see you then. Good job, Corgi. Namaste to you and your pets.